I just installed my electric water heater, which means I needed a 30 amp breaker to protect the 240 volt circuit. I needed to install a new breaker. Let's see how I installed my 30 amp breaker. I'm going to install this 30 amp double pole breaker into my service panel slash breaker box. I'm going to be doing that today. I'm going to be cutting off the main power just to be extra safe. I have a 10 gauge cable coming through the studs, the joists for my new water heater over here. I have just enough length and I'm going to be cutting somewhere along here and then putting a uh, cable uh, connector right here. I'm going to tap out that, that little circle there and then I'm going to have cables go to the ground and then this is both hot wires, 240 volts. For those tools, I'm going to use uh, plenty of flashlights. I like this headlamp. It looks, shines wherever you look. Regular flashlight. And this is a battery power. I wish I kind of had a uh, rechargeable one, but this is an LED light, shop light shine where I'm working because I'm going to cut the power completely off. I've seen people do this without cutting the power because you're essentially just snapping it in really quick. But you can be careful of arcs and be careful of touching these wires because I'm going to have cables coming in. I don't want the ends of the conductors hitting anywhere live, so I'm definitely going to be cutting off the power. Other tools, I have a Robertson bit number two and a screwdriver. I have a, that can also go into a power drill, of course. And you can see the uh, the number two uh, bit goes perfectly into a lot of the uh, the screws that are used in these electrical panels and whatnot. You can also use a flat. Uh, but the Robertson is perfect for that. I use my uh, Stanley wire strippers. You can see it's got the 10 gauge there for solid, so I know to put it right in the top. In this case, 10 gauge. Um, yellow is um, 12 gauge, and white is um, is usually uh, 14 gauge. But uh, I'm not using any stranded, so here we go right there. Okay, it also has a cutter, and I use the tops to. Um, to twist wires when I need to use wire nuts. Here I'm not going to be using wire nuts though. I am going to be using this. This pops in after I tap that out and then this will connect and hold the cables um, securely. Just like that. Um, this can save your life. This is a uh, contactless voltage tester. What I always do is I make sure the battery works. Uh, some of them have an on button. This one doesn't. It's just kind of always ready. Um, test it on a known hot wire. It's red and beeps. Then it's hot. And then test the other wire. Then it's not. And when I cut this off, I'll do the same thing. Test everything. Obviously that's hot. Hot. Two bus bars. They're all hot. When I turn this off, use this to make sure that there's no power on. Um, other than that, other tools, this one's just for cutting, and side cutters here. Um, that nice uh, good grips on it, can cut through 10 gauge wire, easy, 10 gauge conductors. These are more needle nose uh, for whatever purposes, sometimes to turn the, um, when you're tightening something to a screw, like a ground screw, these are good for turning that first, uh, the bare copper. In my case, the bare copper is just going to go into there. I'm going to find a loose one, a uh, one that's not um, doesn't have a wire in it, and I'm going to put that ground in there, tighten it down, sticks out about an eighth of an inch, make sure you give it a tug. Um, that way I know my water heater is grounded. Other than that, both of these, it's going to say white and black, but in my situation, they are both hot. I'm going to put black tape around the white just to, um, to always, uh, so anybody working on it knows that it's not a neutral that it's actually hot uh, because this is a 240 volt appliance uh, with no neutral. So that's my situation and I'm going to be cutting the power and uh, I'm going to basically just snap this in. One thing you got to remember if you're going to be doing this yourself, um, for one I have a permit to do this work um, from the, uh, the township, my borough, so I'm Permitted to do this as the homeowner. Um, if you're not sure about anything, always get a professional. 
But anyway, this is a Siemens. You always have to get the right brand. There are some that are that might be uh, compatible. But it's better to just get the right same brand as everything else. And you can see that on each breaker. You can see the brand name and the actual. You can see it all over the place. So that says Siemens there. Um, this this is the cover. And you can see uh, Siemens load center. So you want to get the same same breaker. Always research what what kind of breaker you need. You don't want it to be too large because then it won't have a enough protection. You don't want to have it too small because it might trip too much. It might constantly trip. Um, so in this case, I need a, um, a 30 amp uh, breaker. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm just going to be snapping it in using these little corner things to go under those little tabs. And then this part is where the hot voltage will go into. I'm going to make sure this is off. Make sure it's always off when you put it in. This power is going to be off anyway. Snap it in. And then when I turn this power on, when I turn this on, if I have the uh, conductors going into here, which I will put each one into that, um, then this will be a protected circuit, protected by this breaker, and the circuit will be hot. And then my hot water heater will heat the hot water, will heat the cold water to turn it into hot water. Breaker, uh, just make sure you have the right size breaker. Make sure these are actually come in slimmer, slimmer versions. Mine don't, mine have the older style, so I made sure to get that size. Uh, 30 amps is correct. I'm just going to cut that, strip it properly. I'm going to be conservative and cut not as much at first because then I'm going to tuck this wire back into that. And then I'll see if we can get some uh, some footage of me putting that on and turning this breaker on. That just means power is going to that breaker the main breaker, but it's not flowing to each bus bar, to each side, and that's expected. You can only shut that power off elsewhere. The city will shut that off. So right now, none of these cables are energized, so I'm good. Nut and tightens on the inside. While I'm here, I may as well hammer on. These are insulated tacks that tack on um, cable. I have it going through the joist, but it also should be supported somewhere. So I'm going to support it on the side of the joist up there with one of these little uh, insulated tacks. Not too much coming through, just a little bit. Come here. paper around the ground and usually just cut it with these things. And I gotta figure out the size of my conductors here and see uh I just come in I don't need that much. So this can go to either of these neutral bars. The first one I'm gonna cut off some just to get an idea here. Save this. It's always useful for jumpers and whatnot. 
Another useful tip for safety is the two hand roll. If you touch something with both hands, it's worse than if you touch something with only one hand at a time. That's because when you touch it with two hands, you could complete a circuit. But as always, you can always double check. Another it's a good thing to have this on you if you're gonna go somewhere and come back, because you never know if somebody could have turned this on. They could have come down here and they said, oh, well, you know, should have turned on. Now, of course, in this case, you'll see all the lights on and whatnot, but same goes with an individual breaker. Um, it's always good to test wires. If you're in a different room and you shut off one of these breakers, and there's other people, you should put a little note that says not to turn it back on. And then when you're working on cables, always test it with these. Needle nose come in hand handy here. Pushing that guy back there. And you can see what I did there, kind of off camera, was I took this uh, ground wire, this ground conductor here, this copper, okay? And I put it in one of the available spots in this neutral ground bar, this bus bar, okay? Now it's loosened, so all I have to do is take my Robertson screwdriver and tighten that down. Now I'm gonna be Taking this metal thing is somewhat insulated, and I'm going to be brushing up against these hot wires. So I'm going to double check again. I know it's off, and I know if I touch one of these wires, I'll be fine. Always give it a tug, and it's not going anywhere. All right, so that's it for the ground wire moment you've been waiting for. All I did was route that the black and white cables, the wires, to the other side. Okay, that's something that can be done. There's no problem with that. It's out of the way. And if you'll see, you can barely see it probably, but it says strip gauge there. Strip gauge. So you're only supposed to strip just that amount, which is what I've done. And I put black just so Everybody knows that these are supposed to be both hot wires, both hot conductors. So this is off. Okay. Double check that anyway. You can always double check. This is off. Power to it. It's got these little tabs. It might be different for a different brand. It might be slightly different. So it's got these little tabs that go in there. These are somewhere out of the way. And then it just snaps into place. Okay, you can barely see back there where the copper is going to meet. And then, okay, it can be a little loose, but this isn't loose at all. That's fine. And that's all it. That's it. So I push that in. Okay, now I have to connect the wires. And that is as simple as just putting them back into there. Okay, you can do this last because... There are times when you might need to actually move some of these wires at different times. I can do this one at a time. Okay, so you put just enough in. Alright. And I can use my number two Robertson here to tighten. Enough that you can't can't pull it out, and because I'm 240 volts, it doesn't matter which one, black and white. They go to the water heater, and it's going to have black and red, but it really doesn't matter in this case. What I did was the second one is to tighten down that bolt right there, and then I made sure. Again, these are not hot right now, so I don't have to worry about that. Make sure they're not going to move. And this is off, so now I'm going to put the cover back on so I can turn the power back on and flip that breaker. I know that this is secure. All these wires are secure, so let's get the uh, cover back on. Got these helpful little tabs so that can one person can do this. 
It holds up the uh, cover. All right, let there be light. And because this is ready to go, and most importantly, this is filled with water. I have already pre-filled this water. You cannot turn the power on when the tank is empty because these elements will burn out. So now it has water in it. So I'm going to turn it on and it's going to start right away to heat this water. That's how you put in a new breaker to finish the electrical work on your water heater. Last things do is just write down there, water heater.